everyone, so welcome back to the former Scarborough to Whitby railway line, opening in 1885 and closing throughout by 1965. So it's still got a good life, didn't it, of 80 years. What I've seen so far in all the previous parts, this would have been a stunning route to have traveled on. So we've left Robin Hood's Bay behind, absolutely beautiful and popular location for tourists and the folk that live nearby too. So we're heading on towards Whitby, the fourth and final part I'm going to take in places such as Horska, where there is a preserved railway carriage or two that you can actually stay in and have a holiday and that. I'd like to do that one day. And then we're going to take in the magnificent Laurepool Viaduct. The views over the S Valley are absolutely stunning. So let's have a look at railmaponline.com and see where we're going and we'll see where we've been so far. So the route goes from Scarborough all the way through to Whitby, taking in places such as Clarton, Raven's Car, of course Robin Hood's Bay and off towards Whitby. And in today's video, we're going to be doing the section from Robin Hood's Bay right through to Whitby. And that is where our route does in fact terminate. But it's not the last video in this series, so don't worry about that, there's another one to come. So today we're going to pick up where we left off in the last video, Robin Hood's Bay. We did Raven's Car to Robin Hood's Bay in part three, and this is part four where we're going to head off towards Whitby. And we're going to go through some of the highest parts of the entire route on the cliff edges before we skirt around towards Horska Station. And there's a little bit of history about that and a few lovely photographs to show you along there. And then we're going to curve around just slightly before we hit the beautiful brick-built viaduct that is Laurepool, which dominates the S Valley and is an absolute sight to be seen. So I'm looking forward to getting to that point. Once we've passed over Laurepool Viaduct, we're going to leave it behind and head towards Prospect Hill Junction. And this was the point where both lines intercepted each other. The upper line off Laurepool, off towards Whitby Westcliff Station, also met up with a line that curved around, took the descent down to Whitby Station. And that is where we're going to finish off today at Prospect Hill Junction at Whitby. Look at that. Absolutely glorious. Just to think, around about 17 miles ago, we began the journey over in Scarborough and we've got about four, four and a half miles to go. Robin Hood's Bay is just around that corner. So, let's push on. The wind has got up a little bit, unfortunately. But so what? Look at the sky. It's a beautiful day. Look at the gradient going up as we leave Robin Hood's Bay behind. And you can even make it out going down as the track disappears around the corner. sleeper indentations look as we take the curve we are still going uphill there's still an incline that's the view back to Robin Hood's Bay that curve and the bend around and then you can still see the least sleeper indentations all the way for a good distance to be honest you can just make them out and get my shadow out of the way you can just see them it's a beautiful beautiful day there's a nice little overbridge it's like former farm access, apologies for the wind. It's all gated up, look down there on that side. Looking out towards the coast. Nice old stone gate post down there. And it is open on this side. And the abutments as well, look. Well, 
the track bed is now leveled off and I believe it is its highest point now on the entire route. So we've got the sea over there. I'm about a mile and a half from Robin Hood's Bay. You can see the track bed is flat and then it's going to dip down again to the left down there before we head on to Horska. I think I pronounced that correctly. Uh, say again, 80 years that was open, 85 till 1965. I think it only consisted of one platform. The station buildings are still there though. And as I said previously, along with that carriage, I really, really want to stay in one of those. That'd make a epic video, wouldn't it? Staying in one of those, I'd like to do that. Nice little bridge this, isn't it? We're gonna go straight through because I've just passed a bunch of people and I don't want to get stuck behind them again. It's a bit like being a car stuck behind a tractor for a while. Sneakers in the ground there. A little hut just here. Let's have a look. It might be one of those honesty box things selling potatoes and stuff. Here we go. Look, skinny people are easier to kidnap. Stay safe and eat cake. <laughs> That's pretty good. So, on the entire route, I believe this is the busiest part at Horska that you have to actually cross a road, but there is a pedestrian crossing. So it can be done safely. And I'll see you on the other side. Now oh, that worked out really well, got straight over. It's around about just 9.30 in the morning. Hardly any traffic about coming up to the station soon. So here it is. Horska station closed in 1965. Absolutely beautiful. Now, luckily I did some footage of this in February on a brief stop past and the holiday carriage was out of season so I did it while there's nobody staying in it because there is somebody staying in it now and I don't want to be filming it while they are anyway so I'll jump you to the footage from three months ago Something worth pointing out when we get to this station is that although the track was lifted pretty sharpish from at this station back towards Scarborough, the track was left in place for a good number of years to 1973 I believe. So these photographs are showing it in the early 1970s because there was supposedly going to be a huge potash quarry and there was potentially a chance of all this potash being transported by rail so this section of line including the section over Larpool Viaduct was kept in a mothballed state just in case this potash quarry never actually came about. Now ironically the potash quarry is now in existence and there's an absolutely huge tunnel under construction the Woodsmiths Mine Tunnel and that is a huge conveyor belt which is going to be 23 miles in length with a complex being built at Teesside where this will be deposited. So on the northern end of Horska station this is where the camping coaches are look as we approach them. So we've got the platform on this side and this is a Mark 3 coach that I'm unsure how long this has actually been here but this is the one that you can actually stay on. You stay here for vacations and it's something that I would absolutely love to do. I have so many memories of riding on those on the Intercity 125s back in the day and the Mark 1 coach on site is used to house the cycles for the cycle high. Not sure how long that's been on site but it's a beautiful addition to the preserved railway station building.
lovely. I'd love to stay in that. Um, got the early warning thingy in the distance. Is it Filing Dales? Used to have the three golf balls on the hill till about 15 years ago. I don't think you really saw it from that, but it gives you perspective where I am. So we're leaving the station behind. We've got about a mile and a half or so until we get to the magnificent Laurelpool Viaduct over the S Valley. And there's even a holiday park down there that I stayed in when I was about 12 years old. So a couple of years ago now. So the next significant and finest structure on the entire route, 279 meters in length and 37 meters at its highest point, with 13 brick built arches, is Larpool Viaduct. Opened in 1885 along with the rest of the line and lasted until its closure in 1965. I'm looking forward to seeing this. It's a glorious day, but it's really, really windy. So I'm gonna try my best with it. So whether I can fly the drone around it is another thing. But luckily I got footage not that long ago, again in February. So it will look a bit gloomier, but at least we got it up. But I'll give it a try. A very tidy looking red brick bridge there, isn't it? It's in um, good condition, apart from some obvious cracks in the roof, but well maintained nevertheless. Bit of an incline now. We've been on a descent ever since we got to the highest point before Horsker. Over there is Whitby Abbey. I don't really think you're going to see it. I think we're about two miles away from that and about two miles, maybe a little bit more because it twists a little bit from our final destination of Prospect Hill Junction. Coming up to an overbridge now. I think this is the first one that we've been over today. Staines Acre Road is down there, look. And over there. And we're pushing on towards Larpool. What I have been impressed with, and just going past one now has brought my attention to it, is the complete lack of dog mess. It's all been picked up. It's absolutely amazing and, you know, fantastic. Thanks to everybody that does do that because I've got a lot of walks and it's like dodge the landmine. But I've just seen the first one of the entire trip. So thanks to everybody that does live around here and visits here for doing that. Apart from the person that's just left Curly the Caterpillar just down there. Must have been too heavy to pick up. Nice little stone wall here, look. Some sort of underpass. Uh, let's go and have a look. Look, we can get down. Where's it going? Oh, look at this. Oh, look at the stone work of the path isn't that wonderful let's go through out the other side and it's like another world look bark at the birds and they'll go quiet just as i say that there's the other side huge huge crack just there in the stone but other than that that's lovely we're on a beautiful, beautiful, lush green cutting right now. So we head on a descent down towards Larpool Viaduct. That's what I've got behind me, glaring sunshine. We're not far now, maybe a quarter of a mile. Nice little red brick wall over bridge. Look at the bow down in the middle. Can you see that? There's a path and steps down here, look. Let's have a little look down below.
So here is the approach to La Paul Viaduct. I'm looking forward to seeing those views. Look at those coping stones on there. Absolutely weathered as hell, but look astounding. That's the Captain Cook's holiday village on the left. I stayed there when I was about 12 years old. And we've got recesses pretty much, are they actually parallel to each other? Got that one there. Pan, you're right, yes they are. Quite often or usually they are staggered, aren't they? Let's see what we're looking at on the other side. Oh, look at that. Beautiful S Valley. And the Abbey Ruins is in the distance. How stunning is this today? Over to this refuge just here. And there's a greater view of that holiday park. steel plate on it look I wonder if they used to do abseiling off it or some kind of maintenance the current view over the edge you can just see the railway line in centre of shot down there and the water is just glistening today now I do love these old photos that I've come across during the construction of Larpole Viaduct and this one appears to be at the earliest stages I believe the foundations are probably just being put into place you can see the S Valley and note the little railway wagons which i believe these joined on to the main line which went into whitby the one which is still active today if we jump to this picture which is a little bit more advanced so you can see the pillars of the first arches are way way into an advanced stage of construction look right in the center you can see that little curve of railway line where those wagons were and this third picture from the opposite angle yet again we've got that curve lot and it shows more clearly where this was a little loop around that appeared to jump onto the active railway line and in the far distance you can see there are now three main pillars for the archers now constructed for this viaduct so there's a good few months apart i believe where these pictures were taken and then we've got the finished article but shortly after closure unfortunately we're looking down right below on the left hand side where that curve of track would have once joined onto the main line at the bottom note the track is a little overgrown so i'm going to say this is around about 1968 69 or 70 that this photo was taken
didn't we just get lucky with that? Heading off towards Dromont. What a beautiful sight that was. It would have been even better if it was a steam engine, but a heritage diesel locomotive, 50 odd years old. That comes a close second, doesn't it? So I've popped down on the coastal side of the viaduct to just talk a little bit about it. Now it took nearly 5 million bricks to construct this 120 foot high viaduct. It does have 13 arches and it spans the Esk Valley, the River Esk, the Middlesbrough to Whitby railway line is also down at the bottom. So let's just show you that a little bit. So there's the River Esk just there. The railway is in the foreground out of sight and there's a holiday park. Uh, I believe it's Captain Cook's retreat. So now on the final part of our journey. Wow, around about 21 miles from Scarborough and today from Robin Hood's Bay off towards Whitby. Liverpool Viaduct is just tremendous. And we got lucky with that train going underneath when we did, especially it being a heritage one. That's a lovely triple arch bridge, isn't it? Those walls look very low, very, very low. And there's the other form of route down there, look. We're quite high above it now. I'm gonna have a quick run up and see what we can see on top of this bridge. And that's what it looks like from above, look. So all the side walling has gone and it has been concreted off on the top. And that's why they won't let you across. So a quick return to Realm Up Online just to give you a quick idea of how this all works. So we've got Lowerpool Viaduct just here. That's the blue line going from bottom and upwards. Prospect Hill Junction, where we are right now, is just here. And you can see these two lines do in fact join together. If we follow the blue line north, we'd head up to Whitby Westcliff Station and beyond towards Staves and Loftus near Middlesbrough. But what workings used to do, they'd come from the direction of Scarborough, cross over Larpool Viaduct and get themselves up to Whitby Westcliff Station. And then they'd reverse or run around if it was a locomotive and then take this line that loops around underneath Larpool Viaduct and ends up at Whitby Town Station. So just to the left of me out of sight was in fact another former track bed and this was the one that led up to Prospect Hill Junction where we're going now give you a little look down because you can actually walk on it it's just down there look. and that went on to join onto the current S Valley line and this was Prospect Hill Junction if I turn you about there's a nice retaining wall on the right look if I turn you about you can see the gradient heading down towards the S Valley and also the bridge of Prospect Hill that's the road that goes across it the signal box at Prospect Hill Junction was very unique in the way that it straddled the line which went down to Whitby Town Station and I believe the individual that took these photos of Mr John Boys, he actually worked in this very signal box and we're going to take a better look at this in part 5. So what you can see here is a unit which I believe has come up from Whitby Town Station, it has gone up to Westcliff Station and then reversed and is going up towards Scarborough. So it's around about a quarter of a mile from crossing over Larpool Viaduct. In this shot, well, it's not looking so good, is it? This is 1973. You can just make out that triple arch bridge in the background. The charred remains of the signal box after vandals set fire to it and the track bed. And here we have it back in happier times, the way that we'd all like to remember it. 
I believe this is 1964 and again you've got the unit which I believe is heading off towards Larpool and onto Scarborough you can just make out Larpool Viaduct in the centre of this shot right in the distance and it is about to go onto that triple arch bridge past the signal box some old relics there look and this is Prospect Hill where the junction gets its name from Prospect Hill Junction and that's the main busy A road leading into Whitby and going over the top really big blocks of stonework as the base foundations and a red brick roof and on the other side exactly the same there's an express service going south towards Scarborough and this as they say is pretty much end of the line it did used to carry on towards a few other places the line continued on to stay from towards Middlesbrough but for now I hope you've enjoyed this video if you've watched the other three parts I hope you've enjoyed them too I will do a drone video as well from start to finish Scarborough to Whitby I think also at some point I'd like to continue on this route try and follow the track bed as far as possible through places such as Sands End and Kettleness because we've done the tunnels already that the actual track bed where it is available to walk on so please any suggestions comments below thank you very much for your support please share this video let's get it out there everywhere thanks very much goodbye